you know, in this episode, you, you tend to take things for granted. I mean, like, sunshine, grass, sustainable energy sources, and arms. What is up, everybody? Especially you agents out there. Welcome back to Nephilim Entertainment. I'm your host, Metatron Euro. Thank you for tuning in. And this is my coverage of Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. And this is episode 10, Past Life. Whew. So, we begin with seeing Cassius's reaction to different things, like the course of Snare. He took it rather well, right? I mean, he looked slightly mortified, which is normal, right? And he just... Look, he's been dealing with a bunch of stuff himself. And first of all, you know, now we have the death of Snare. Which, the death of his brother was of his own hand. <laughs> Karma. And now his humans are now sort of rebelling against him. And there's absolute complete anarchy. But here, <laughs> here's the thing. Apparently he's raising the dead, a, aka in humans. Which is a little... Weird, right? I mean, we're having the dead resurrected, and by weird means. So, when is the cycle going to stop? I'm wondering. Cassius is pretty much done whatever he wants, and the rain on Earth, or what's left of Earth, has been sort of unaltered. Now, <laughs> thanks to the Asians of S.H.I.E.L.D., uh, they completely turned his entire paradise into a complete anarchy. So we're learning about the plans of the different groups. First of all, we got Phil's plan. He's wanting to gather all the people up and power up the time traveling machine and everybody getting the hell out of there, which is a good thing. Then you have Yo-Yo's plan, who she wants to try to save one inhuman, who apparently Cassius is keeping hostage, and apparently she's in a great deal. He or she, mostly she, is in a great deal of pain. Yeah, our source is Tess, our little zombified girl. Yeah, she looks worse for wear, right? I've noticed in this episode she's very pale, and she looks like death warmed over, literally. So, we're really going to save someone based on this girl who was once dead, and now she's been brought back? What? So, with that, um, we also get something quite strange from Mac. Apparently, Mac makes an offer to Flint to come back with him. If Flint comes back, then he can always stay with him and Elena, which sounds like a good notion, right? I mean, they pretty much became the surrogate family he's never had. I don't, and I said this last episode, and I say it again. Max got enough of a protective nature that I think you'd be a good father figure. I mean, we saw how he was with his little girl Hope last season, and we see how good he is with his little brother. Even though his little brother is pretty much a grown man, I mean, Max could be a good adoptive father, I think. And Elena, she's got enough wits and nurture about her too, to where I think she'd be a good surrogate mom. So. I'm on board. I don't know about y'all. I mean, why not? But, um, yeah, I owe y'all a big apology. Big apology. I thought that Tess was an imposter. I thought surely there was absolutely no way that someone could be brought back for blood. But I did forget Cree blood. I don't know why I didn't think of it. And I've watched seasons one and two. And it just completely dawned on me at some point during this episode that Cree blood it can reanimate dead humans. I mean, that's the whole thing that 
led the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. to the Kree, to the Inhumans, and I mean pretty much led them to this whole entire civilization which brought about Daisy Johnson's well first of all didn't just bring back Daisy Johnson's abilities but actually brought back brought about Daisy Johnson I mean the whole Kree blood notion I mean that's what this whole entire series has been based on Inhumans, Kree blood, Phil Collins coming back from the dead I mean, it all is just all starting to come for a full circle. And I completely forgot about that. And I was calling Tess an imposter. I do apologize for that. I completely forgot about Cree Blood being good to bring back the dead. So I'm just wondering if she's going to have the weird hallucinations like Colson did. It's possible. Eh. But apparently, Cree Blood is very potent with humans. And we're finding out that it's very potent about bringing berserkers because Cassius uses it on the excuse me human in human trainer basically turns him into a berserker which if anybody knows their nurse Nor Norse culture that the berserker was kind of like the crazed warrior that went out and tried to kill everybody and he created his own so Ace still had that to worry about but uh yeah um Cassius, he's a uh, he's talking to a corpse, right? That's not crazy. It seems legit, right? It's not crazy whatsoever. I mean, he's talking to her like she's about to answer him back. What is up with Cassius? I mean, is he just naturally crazy, or is this just the coming of what the events have brought us? You know, this crazed lunatic talking to a dead corpse and wanting to put all effort in taking down some. I mean, let him go. Pack your bags, cut your losses, and go. There's no shame in just going. You know, paint this great deed of sacrifice to your father and just go. I mean, why are you so obsessed with... This dude's got to get his priorities straight. I don't know, seriously. But he keeps talking about his seer. Who is his seer? Who... Who does he keep talking about his seer? Well, Yo-Yo is on the move to find out. And we find out that the seer, Yo-Yo finds it, and it's Yo-Yo? Yeah, apparently, spoiler alert, um, Cassius' seer is Elena. Who? Yo-Yo. Yo-Yo finds out that the seer is an older version of Yo-Yo. Apparently, she somehow survived during this this big conflict. I don't know if Cassius was the original person who was in charge back when she first went after this rebellion, but apparently she was killed, and over time she's been resurrected, killed, resurrected, killed, resurrected, killed, and when Yo-Yo asked her how many times have you been killed and resurrected, she couldn't re recall, and she didn't exactly straight at the point. Apparently after 70 years she still looks like she did. Except the missing arms. And I love this. I mean I love this for the I was waiting I was waiting for someone of the original cast to come back. I expected to see an older version. You know, like maybe a possible ancient looking agent of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, I was half expecting to see Daisy Johnson laying on the bed. You know, stripped of her powers and basically mined for her abilities. No, it was Yo-Yo, but I was expecting this because I know it was going to make a paradox. The whole, I talked to her, our future self and I found out what happened or something along that extent. So for them to do this, it was expected, but it didn't have the same results as I was hoping. I was a little disappointed by that. I was really hoping for, you know, either an epiphany or something just, you know, but I mean, it didn't disappoint because we did find out some interesting stuff. One thing we did find out is <laughs> that apparently she got to watch everybody die, which is the bad part. Another thing we find out is that Coulson's dying. Coulson's dying, and we don't exactly know from what. 
or who, but he's dying for some reason. And I we don't exactly know who. What it looks like is the same kind of impact that was happening to Iron Man and Iron Man 2. Because he's getting the same kind of road rash as Iron Man had. So is this possibly some kind of chemical poisoning? Who knows? But we got um, our boy Drake. He's being brave. He's volunteering to uh, help go help Enoch cover and save the device so our people can get home, which is very awfully brave of him. This dude went from being a little chicken shit to now he's volunteering to go be a hero. What happened? <laughs> you used to be a spineless coward who would trade in his friends and run away. Now you're actually volunteering to sacrifice yourself? Who are you and what did you do with your Deeks? Please, tell me. But Clegg makes a stand. And does not, <laughs> Phil Coulson does not take it quite well. In fact, he shoots her with a nice shirt. Tells her, you're going to go whether you like it or not. So, when she wakes up, I'm interested to see how that's going to unfold. Because Daisy didn't want to go back to the past to begin with. Because she knew that at some point she would be the destruction of the world. Now Coulson's making her go anyway. So, I'm interested to see what this is going to develop as far as story-wise. Especially when we get to the second half of the season that's coming up later on but I love this May says something that I, it's two words but yet it holds so Im much of an impact you're Flint he turns around all hero like what's up I love that I love Flint's character because he has so much potential and I mean, he's young he's just got a new power we're not really sure what all he's capable of I mean, we get a little bit of a taste of it throughout the last few episodes, but we really don't know the extent of his powers. I mean, it gives us a, sort of that fresh feel. I mean, it was the same way when we felt about Daisy Johnson when we first introduced her with powers, and then we turned around and we introduced Yo-Yo with powers. I mean, we, we started becoming sort of complacent with these heroes. When we start seeing their powers so much, it's like, yeah, she used her powers again. Nothing major there. She used her powers again, so... Seeing a hero with new powers, it, it adds sort of fresh perspective, and I love that. I mean, I know after a while it'd be kind of dull to constantly recycle heroes all over again, but at the same time, it gives us a nice little, oh, he's just discovering his powers. What is he capable of, I wonder? It gives us that excitement, and I'm, I'm, I miss that. So with Flynn coming along, now as he becomes sort of the um, makeshift hero, but he also adds a sort of an excitement and thrill to the audience because the audience now gets to see somebody new, fresh, whose powers could either be the power to save the day, or in Daisy's con, in Daisy's um, in Daisy's terms, could cause the end of the world. But when it's all said and done, we finally get <laughs> Cassie has finally decides to fight after being souped up on Creed blood. He actually decides to go and fight Mac, of all people. Mac and his axe shotgun. Is this a fair fight? I'm just saying, is this a fair fight? You got one alien who's hopped up on basically PCP for space heads. You got one dude who's got a shotgun slash axe. Who's going to win this bout? <laughs> Apparently the alien that's souped up. But, thanks to... Jimma Simmons, the day was saved. So Cassius finally meets his end at the hands of Mac with his nice, handy dandy, snazzy axe shotgun. Finally, we get to see a kill worthy of a shotgun axe. I love it. And I know it was graphic, and I'm surprised that ABC allowed it to happen, especially on a primetime TV show where there's a possibility of little kids watching. But the death was worthy of the weapon, and I applaud them for doing it. Thank you, sir. It's awesome. So, with all this said and done, we actually have a sac another sacrifice. But this time it's Deeks and Enoch. Apparently, with the machine being damaged during a scuffle between a Kree and Enoch, the only way to actually power the machine to send our people home was Enoch sacrificing himself because he is, in fact, an automaton. 
and he apparently is going to sacrifice himself and Deeks too because Deeks has to push the button. So there goes our two people and finally the episode ends with Tess and Flint looking back at the remains of the earth possibly building hope and I love it too because whenever it was talked about Flint talked about rebuilding everything Tess hands him the globe that our boy Virgil used to carry around as a keepsake and said look here's your blueprint that right there gives us the idea that maybe in this timeline maybe Flint will put the world back together again all right, up next for Agents of Shield. Um, first of all, apparently they're going on a, a one month hiatus. Uh, we will not get to see a new episode until March second, so that's a month's time at least. I don't exactly know if it's just a seasonal break or what, but when we come back, our people actually make it back to the original timeline, and they've already given us the whole the whole idea of it. I mean, episode ended with did Mac and Gemma and Yo-Yo make it back in time? <gasps> oh, when they get back, it's just like, oh, look, you're here. Ta-da! So, they're not really going to leave us with too much of a of a um, suspenseful, you know, <laughs> oh, what is it called? They're not going to leave us uh, I forgot what it's called. There's a term for it that drives everybody crazy. On a cliffhanger. There we go. They don't leave it on a cliffhanger. My bad. They, you know, <laughs> the next episode pretty much recaps. It's like, oh yeah, by the way, here we go. They're here, so don't worry. When they come back, they are going to be the most wanted. We're going to actually see basically everybody hunting after the Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. now. So I'm curious to see how they're going to, you know, <laughs> work that out. But, um, question for y'all, and I want to wrap this up, is, do you think Flint probably should have went with Mac and Elena? Let me know down in the comments below. And that's going to be right for me. Uh, give me a big thumbs up down below. Let me know what you think about the video. Let me a nice friendly comment. Be sure to stay to the end of the video and subscribe to my page for more content. But I'm going to turn you around. You're watching Info Entertainment. To all you daydreamers and creators out there, keep your heads in the clouds. Peace.